Hey, everybody out there. Welcome to Zombie House Flipping. I guess this is like the, the catch-up or the uh, the kind of the rundown of where we're at in Zombie House Flipping world. We have, um, we have three Zombie House Flipping shows, actually, that are coming out over the next couple of months, January and February. And one of them, of course, is the original show in Orlando, Florida. And that's going to feature myself, Peter Duke, and a new cast member, Alin Cordray, who, while new to you, isn't new to Peter and I, because we've worked together for, God, 10, 15 years, something like that. Uh, Lynn has really always been part of Zombie House Flipping, kind of in the background. Um, she's been, uh, I think she was on in season two, maybe, uh, as our architect. Um, she also does structural engineering for us and a number of other things. But her real hallmark is as a designer. Um, and she and Peter worked together for a couple of years, even before I met her. And then uh, she, Peter and I have all worked together closely over the past decade. So the part that I find most interesting is that if you go back, if we rolled back 10 years ago to, uh, you know, 2013, if somebody would have told me that 10 years later that Peter, Lynn and I would be on zombie on a TV show on A&E together, I, I wouldn't have believed it, but I would have been really happy with that outcome. So we're all together here in Orlando and uh, we're excited to introduce a Lynn to you. So hi everyone, it's Duke. I'm happy to be back here in Orlando flipping houses again with my friend Keith and our team member, Alyn, who you might remember from some earlier episodes and she's joining us now full time on the zombie house flipping team in Orlando. Alyn, tell us more about yourself, would you? Hi, my name is Alyn Cordray and I'm so excited to be joining you guys here today and talking about my experience with the Zombie House Flipping Show. I'm so excited to be joining my friends, uh, Keith and Duke. I've been working with them for years um, behind the camera and I'm really excited about now working with them in front of the camera. We start out with these zombies and we turn them into these amazing properties and I just couldn't be more excited to be working with my old friends. Oh, we're happy to have you back too. You've put a lot of input in behind the scenes as you mentioned on previous houses and all the fans caught a couple of glimpses of you, they're gonna see you front and center on this season and we're excited to show off what you're capable of. Yeah, no, for sure. And uh, we have some really interesting stuff coming up this year. Uh, there's a house we we're working on that has some really unique features where a partner of ours on the on this house kind of went over the top with uh, <laughs> some some things that you wouldn't normally find in a uh, in residential construction but uh it's uh, it's gonna be a pretty impressive build so we can't wait to show it to you so remember zombie house flipping returns to orlando february 25th 11 a.m eastern 10 central only on homemade nation and only on a and e that's right. We'll see you there. Hey, Lynn, thank you for coming on. I can't wait to introduce you to America and I uh, can't wait to get back to work with you on some of these houses. So we'll catch up with you in a little bit. And uh, right now we're bringing on Dolmar Cross from Zombie House Slipping Tampa. That's right. As some of you might know, Zombie House Slipping has expanded to other cities across the nation. And our partners over in Tampa have been working hard, led by Dolmar. We've got him on now. Hey, Dolmar Cross here from Zombie House Flip in Tampa, and together with my business partner, co-star, and agent Sam Middleton, and Amanda, who is our designer, who you're going to be able to witness creating transformational miracles, taking these ugly, nasty, disgusting zombie houses, and turn them into beautiful masterpieces. You'll be able to watch us on a &E on Saturday, 11 a.m. Eastern, doing beautiful miracle works in Tampa right here, just like our friends in Orlando do. Well, I got so I got a question, Dolmar. We don't, Dolmar. We don't know each other yet, but I, I am curious. Like, what's the what's the scariest zombie that you've ever worked on? <laughs> well, I've had the opportunity to do a lot of flips over the years. I've been doing this since I was twenty years old. I started before as a balloon artist. I got into real estate. Um, I was a broke balloon artist, door to door salesman. Um, and real estate always intrigued me. And so I jumped into real estate and took on some really ugly, nasty, disgusting houses early on. And, you know, most recently, probably the worst I've ever done was one of the most recently houses, houses I did. And you also see that on the show as well. It was a house filled with poop. I've never been in a house like that before. I've been in, in some very interesting houses with human feces. I've been in a house one time where a lady was defecating in her house, but she allowed her dog to go out in the yard and she was bathing in a bucket. I mean, I've been in some interesting houses, but this one house, um, it was just surrounded with roaches, like piles of roaches and flies. 
And yeah, we had to walk through that and clean that up and renovate that. That was probably the most hazardous, toxic, nasty, disgusting house we've ever done. But it turned out into a beautiful masterpiece as well. And you get to see it on a &E on our show. So I mean, I'm curious. So that sounds amazing. It sounds actually it sounds really awful. But but you said did I hear you say <laughs> did, did, did I hear you say you started out as a balloon artiste? Like like the you're making like the like the the animals and stuff out of balloons. Yep. Before right? real estate. Yep. Before real estate, I was in college. I was a broke college student. Um, but most college students are right. My back yeah. was against the wall. I didn't have a pot to pin or a, a, a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of. I was like broke, bro. And, you know, back in college, I had to do little odd jobs just to get by. And so I was a balloon artiste. I was a door to door salesman. So as a balloon artiste, I was that guy in restaurants that would make pregnant monkeys and lovebirds kissing and flowers. And uh, I did all those wow. little things. I made like 300 bucks in like two hours just off of tips. And that's how I survived. But after a while, you know, I was living, I was still living just above broke every month. My parents oftentimes had to bail me out every month as a college student. And, you know, it gets very hard when you don't have any pennies, nickels or dimes to rub together back against the wall, not knowing, you know, what to do. And, and so I found real estate and real estate is what literally changed my life. Now, I jumped into real estate not knowing uh, what I was doing because I grew up in the church. My dad's a pastor and jumping into real estate head first. I made every mistake you can think of. Um, you know, people took advantage of my inexperience. Uh, but I didn't allow that to uh, deter me. I made mistakes on my first four deals. I lost money on my first four deals, uh, but I invested in mentorship and uh, I was able to grow that to the business and empire that I have today. And so I'm super grateful for that. Real estate uh, saved my life. And my hope is this show shows others that are watching how they can get involved in real estate, just like my friends Duke, just like Peter. Uh, real estate has been a huge value add for our lives or our business. And we want to show you on our shows how you can do this as well, how anybody can do this as well, regardless of uh, background or financial situation. You can do this. If you have the desire, the will, the drive, the determination, anyone can do this. Attainable aspiration is our goal on this show well Dolmar, what what do you see coming up in the florida market i mean i know nobody has a crystal ball duke and i talk about this all the time like what's next because it you know the, the real estate market in florida is constantly evolving um i'm curious from for your perspective both at large and perhaps specifically in tampa how what do you think the future is going to hold so none of us have a crystal ball but the market is definitely cooling down Right. Um, with some of our houses right now, when we originally bought them and comped them just two months ago, the appraisals today are coming in even less than that. And so moving forward in this complex marketplace, we have to make decisions, smart, intelligent decisions based on data. And so right now we're looking at actives on the MLS. We're looking at recently sold comps in the last 30 days. We don't look at 90 days anymore because a comp 90 days ago was based on comps that were even beyond that. And so we're looking at much rec more recent comps to make decisions about buying decisions when we go to buy a house. And on top of that, when we comp a house today, based on the last 30 days of active and sold comps, we are taking an additional 15 to 20% off, off that value. And we're using that new value to make our buying decisions. So we right now believe that there's still a lot of opportunity in the marketplace and we have to use data and our insights to identify the opportunities, but also position ourselves for any future possibilities that can happen in the near future, good or bad. And that comes down to making sure we buy right and manage risk. That begs another question. So you have, you're experienced, you, you've been around, you know what to look for, but you also mentioned that when you were starting, you made a few mistakes. So if you look at the market now and you're looking at your own experience getting started, what would what bit of advice would you give somebody who wants to start flipping right now in this market? Like how, getting started, how do you avoid some of those mistakes? I think one of the most important things, if someone was just getting started in this business right now today, especially in this climate, is limit your risk. And one of the best ways to limit your risk is by first identifying the location, picking a great location to start in, a location that can also offer multiple exit strategies. And, mo and important, even more important beyond that is when you're going to buy a property, you have to make sure you don't overpay, right? 
don't overpay. You make your profit. There's a famous saying in our industry. All right, you make your profit when you buy, you actualize the profits when you sell. So you have to be conservative on your buy price. And so like what we do is we buy less than what the value is, the after repair value is today. So if the after repair value says the house is $100,000, if it was fixed up in perfect condition, we're going to take it another 15 to 20% off that number so that we can be a little bit more conservative, knowing that in this market right now, some the market is softening and you know buyers aren't as active right now, we might have to come down on that price or that appraisal when it comes in, maybe a little bit less than what we initially comped it for. So we are adjusting for that early. So any new investor coming in, that's my advice. Pick a house in a great location where there's a lot of activity and people are have a high desire to buy in that area. And then when you go buy your property, make sure you are limiting your risk by being more conservative on your buy price and have multiple exit strategies just in case you have to pivot and adjust. Man, that's really well said. Great advice. Really great advice. Domar, I got a question for you. This is something we run into a lot on our team. How do you resolve something when everyone does not agree on it? <laughs> I threw the last person in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, we play rock paper. We play rock paper scissors. Is easy kidding. as that? Okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, you know, I whenever you're working in a team environment, um, you're not you're never always going to agree on things. And right. so, you know, what we do is first off, before we start any project, we identify what the vision and goal is. And even in that, you know, some issues might pop up, some problems might pop up, some disagreements might pop up. And so we, we can do two things. We can either ignore the issue or problem or tackle it head on. And I like to tackle things head on. And so we'll set up a meeting, whether it's in person or over a Zoom call, and we'll talk about it. And I encourage openness. I want people to share their concerns and be blunt and uh, straightforward. And I try to practice, practice active listening and assess the situation, assess the problem, and try to understand uh, their point of view and their position. I learned this uh, from being married, by the way. Uh, my wife has uh, taught me and coached me well, and I'm still learning. I'm not perfect, by the way, uh, to be a better communicator. So as a husband, speaking from a husband, I try to uh, listen more than I talk. Uh, be an active listener, be more empathetic, and come up with solutions. You know, sometimes someone else's idea or direction may even be better than mine, and I need to be open-minded to hear them out. And sometimes we may not, not always agree either, and oftentimes we may have to compromise. And so uh, that's what we do, is we address the problem head-on and sit down and discuss it and come up with a compromise that works uh, for all parties involved, keeping the first first keeping first the uh, goal and the vision in mind for the project. Well said. Wow. Yeah, that's fine. Everyone gets heard that way, and their opinions get respected. And, and by the way, I just want to say I just want to say this. I I, I have to say this. I, I'm Keith uh, Duke. I'm really grateful for you guys. You are the what I consider the OGs of this. Right. You all have started this amazing journey four seasons ago. I think you're on season five now. So many seasons ago, you started on this journey together and you've done amazing flips over the years. Uh, you've impacted the lives of many positively and you've probably gone to help people get started in this business as well. And so I just want to say thank you because without you, if it wasn't for you guys paving the way, this opportunity also wouldn't have been given to myself, Amanda and Sam. And so I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for all that you've done, the pioneers <laughs> of the zombie brand. And I'm, I'm happy to be able to uh, join you on this journey and, and experience as well in, uh, in Tampa, Florida. We're happy to yeah. have you with us as well. And we appreciate the, the accolades. We, we are grateful to the friends that helped us get here. Yeah, for sure. And Dolmar, I think you're going to be an excellent ambassador for the zombie brand. I, I love your enthusiasm. And the way that you're able to communicate uh, really important ideas across to people, it's uh, it's 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 fantastic to get to know you, and uh, I'm proud to have you on board. I appreciate that. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks, fellas. Thanks, Domar. <laughs> and now we've got a sneak peek we want to share with you from tomorrow's zombie house with an episode. Woo! Oh, let's do this. All right, ladies. Yeah. I'm so excited. All right, it is time to turn this zombie 
into a beautiful, sexy thing. It's sexy day. It's sexy day. Let's, Let's turn this do into it. something sexy. <laughs> oh. That thing is going down. Already, the yard is opening up. Right. Wow. Already, you can see the the big yard. Yeah. The huge yard. You ready to give it a shot? Hell yeah! yeah. Let's go. I Come on. Go on the ride. No, shotgun. I want to go. go on the ride. Let's go. Oh uh, Emma, yeah. All right. So what do I do? Don't cost us any money with any mistakes going crazy on that thing. Oh, good oh. job. <laughs> It's a new season of zombie house flipping. New episode Saturday morning at 11, part of Homemade Nation on A&E. So in addition to zombie house flipping Tampa, we have some new friends over in Dallas. Yes. Hi, guys. How you hey, doing? Derek. Hi, Chauncey. Hi. Their episodes premiere Saturday, January 28th at 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Central on Homemade Nation on A&E. Now let's introduce Derek and Sean to you who can tell us a thing or two about what they're up to over in Dallas. Yes. Hi, guys. We're so excited to be a part of the zombie family now. Um, so to tell you a little bit about myself, I've been in the real estate business since 2016. I run a very large team of realtors, about 350 across the country. Um, and so Derek is the brains behind a lot of our operations. So tell them a little bit about yourself, babe. Uh, yeah. So I left corporate America at the end of 2018 and started our investment company, Family Capital Partners. I really put both feet in and uh, we've been flipping houses since, right? So we're meeting the new cast members from these other shows for the first time. And I think it's kind of exciting because I, I don't get to talk to people doing exactly what we do in other parts of the country very often. Um, so I'm kind of curious, uh, guys, what is the like, for example, what's the craziest flip you guys have found yourself in? <laughs> we got a couple of those. Uh, we've had a house, but this house was in bad shape. It was in the best part of town though, that I've ever seen. And uh, it turned out to be a pretty good deal. Yeah, it was crazy. It had needles. It had <laughs> bullet, bullet holes, tails yeah. and bullet holes inside of the yep. house. And literally the shed, like the shop out in the backyard, like an explosion had happened there. So that was a crazy <laughs> one. And then we had another one that had all of the dog poop. Oh, yeah. um, it was covered in dog feces. And there was a weird room. Oh, the lock, yeah. <laughs> a weird room with a lock on the outside. And it looked like someone had been locked on the inside of this room and had been trying to get out. So very odd things are happening here in Dallas. Yes. <laughs> I've got a question for you too. Um, what made you get into flipping originally? Were your roots in real estate before you got into renovating? Yes. Yeah, so I actually um, was on the retail side of real estate for years and years. And I kept coming across uh, properties that weren't really good for the retail market. They needed a lot of work, a lot of deferred maintenance. Um, right. And I started working with investors and I kind of learned a lot of the process of flipping. And Derek was a high level executive in corporate America. His brain just worked really cool. And I remember coming home one day and being like, babe, these guys I'm working with are dumb. Like you could come in and you could really run the show. And like, these are some opportunities that we have. And then he kind of took the reins and, and took that and ran with it. Nice. So, so who's the boss? Like, I mean, you, you came home and said, I got an idea and he took it and he ran with it. He seems like he's, he knows initiative when he sees it. Right. Uh oh. I'd take that how do you guys settle disagreements between like, you know, two very capable and probably determined people? I would say that our skill sets some, are some so, <laughs> our skill sets are so different that yeah. I can't be the boss of what he does and he can't be the boss of what I do. I'm more of the creative, um, I'm more of the talker, I'm more of the networker. So I'm, you know, out there and people are bringing the deals and I'm coming with, uh, coming up with some of the ideas for the houses. And right. then Derek is kind of really the brains behind the operations and the financial part of it. So I would say we're bosses on our own yeah. lanes in the business you're a diplomat well, is what you are you're good that was very diplomatic yeah that no really I, she's the boss right <laughs> yeah and here i thought chauncey was a shy one <laughs> <laughs> well said uh all right well i got so i got a question um the dallas market 
what do you see going on there now? Like I know, again, nobody has a crystal ball, but we have our, our own thing going on in Florida and Orlando. Um, what does the Dallas market look like? And what are maybe some specific or unique uh, facets to it that you might not find in other parts of the country? Oh, the Dallas market right now, just in general, honestly, the one word that I would use to describe it is unpredictable. Um, it doesn't really make sense. So um, you can have, so houses, first of all, are still increasing in value, but increasing very slowly. We were increasing at, you know, a rate that was not sustainable. Yeah. Um, so I think we're seeing that across the board. But what I'm noticing is that there's not any predictability to houses. You can have two houses on the same street that are, are comparable properties. One can be pimped out, be beautiful, and you would think it would fly off the shelf and it'll sit for three, four months. Yep. And then another house that's just like it, but is dated, maybe not as pretty, will get multiple offers. So honestly, right now, um, it's just a really, really weird place, which makes it a little bit more difficult for Derek on you know the acquisition side right like what are you doing well i mean you know it, it's it goes back to kind of one of our principles right really my principle too your money's made you guys know this at acquisition so if you buy right then even in an unpredictable market there's still going to be you know profit to be made so you know that's one thing that we're doing is just making sure that you know we're keeping an eye on what we acquire it for and if the deal isn't right then we just don't pick it up and, and some, some things that are a little bit unique, I would say, about the Dallas market is it's such a very large metropolitan city yep. um, that everyone thinks um, of Dallas as being like Dallas proper. But we've got some major suburban areas um, within a 20, 30 minute drive of Dallas that people still just call Dallas, but it's not really Dallas. Um, mm. And those areas are, you know, actually hyperactive and are selling even more than Dallas proper. So you'll see, you know, some of our zombies and acquisitions are going to be in Dallas proper. And then some are going to be a little bit on the outskirts because that's kind of where people are going. Right. We've got a thousand people a day relocating to Dallas, Fort Worth. Like it is the great migration happening here. And so there's not enough space for everyone in Dallas proper now. So it's a lot kind of going on in the outskirts so that's something yep. that i would say is pretty unique to our yep. area is like our suburbs are hot yep yeah wow that's a lot of ground to cover though your crews have to go far and wide and, and to manage right. them properly i imagine you know you're you're on your toes as well out there moving yep. checking them all out absolutely we barely For leave sure. our zip code right now i think we're spoiled <laughs> yeah no i don't know yeah, I, I like walking to work i don't want, <laughs> i don't want to i don't oh. want to go to, a it's away. a lot of driving lot of like driving. right now with the what five five six that we have i mean it's between some of them can be an hour drive yeah wow <laughs> that, yeah. yeah but it's still consider the dallas fort worth right. metroplex right right okay yeah no that's a huge market i mean my god you guys are in one of the largest msas in the country so you probably it's probably a target rich environment yeah well yeah. I, okay i got another question for you though so Zombie house flipping is growing. We're, you know, we have franchises and you're, part, you're leading one of those. What is your, what's most exciting to you about starting on this journey? Um, you want to take that? Uh, I'll let you kick some. I, I think for me, I'd really say collaboration, right? I mean, you guys are experts. We've been watching you guys from the beginning. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. Just kind of really taking this experience, being able to collaborate with y'all. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm pumped. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I would say the same, um, being able to collaborate um, with everyone, but I, I'm kind of an educator at heart. And so really getting on here and sharing um, with the consumer and with the audience, kind of the good, the bad and the ugly that yeah. comes with house flipping. Like this isn't all fairy tales and unicorn poop, right? Like it's yeah. a tough gig. And um, I think that I'm most excited about really sharing some of the things that we do to have some unique and creative designs, but still like do it in a in an economical way and then mm -hmm. also you know show not just the good but the bad yeah i'm very interested excuse me i'm very interested to see what kind of designs you guys have as well because you know imitation is the most sincere form of flattery and i'm looking forward to seeing what i can steal <laughs> 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 and we're looking forward to tapping yeah. you know, into you so we're looking forward to tapping into you and bugging you about some building stuff we know you guys are experts at that so i think it's gonna be a good time i'm sure it will be Definitely. Man, that's that's great stuff right there. I can't wait to see you two on the screen. You have great chemistry together. You really Yeah, do. for sure. I hope for so. Sure. We've been married for 11 it's been 12 years. years. <laughs> 11 years, yeah. <laughs> it's super exciting to meet you guys. It's fantastic news. You're a great addition to the Zombie House family.
Well, thanks you guys so much for tuning in with us today. We're so excited to be a part of the zombie family. I know you guys have been loving and tuned into watching Duke and Keith for a long time, and we hope you'll enjoy us just as much. Don't forget our season premiere is January 28th at 11 a.m. Eastern time, 10 a.m. Central, and we'll see you there with some zombies. Man, everybody, that was great catching up with our other zombie house up in cast mates. Now, remember, you can watch the Tampa cast on Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Central on A&E. You can watch our friends over in the Dallas cast premiering Saturday, January 28th at 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Central on Homemade Nation, only on A&E. And look out for the return of the OG, Zombie House Slipping Orlando with myself, Duke, and Alin on February 25th at 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Central, only on Homemade Nation, only right here on A&E. Zombies are rising up across America. Who are you going to call? House Flippers! And we've got new teams all over the country. We have a really scary bathroom here. This is just a oh, full yes. gut. I'm always know. nervous about opening doors at these kinds of houses. Plus the return of an OG. Duke is back. Wait until you see the numbers on this project. Zombie House Flipping. New episodes Saturday mornings at 11. Part of Homemade Nation on A&E.